So many of our patients with pancreatic disease develop what we call exocrine pancreas insufficiency, basically meaning that the pancreas isn't making enough enzymes to properly absorb food. Steve, I know this has been an issue for you. Um, can you tell us a little bit about what your symptoms were to lead to that diagnosis? Um, I th yes. The, the, in, the, in the process of uh, recovering following the Whipple operation, um, I lost maybe 25 pounds uh, following the operation. And uh, I felt tired and weak all the time. Um, and wanted to put that weight back on and, and wasn't able to and have still not been able to um, because uh, apparently my body can't uh, absorb the nutrients from the food I'm eating, which is uh, not uncommon after this operation. Um, and it's been a, and continues to be a huge struggle for me because at this, um, at this level that I'm operating, my life has changed uh, incredibly. Um, I'm usually by mid-afternoon quite tired. Um, I almost always need to take a nap and uh, something I've never done. And it, it comes over me uh, in a way that uh, I can't control. And it's, uh, it's just something I've had to give in to and uh, allow to happen. Um, and it's, it's happened currently in my life, I've, as you know, we've discussed. Uh, I've, I've worked with uh, Janine Mills here. We've discussed that I need uh, 100 grams of protein a day and, and I should be having 2,000 calories. Uh, even earlier this morning, uh, you know, I pulled out my peanut butter and jelly sandwich in, in the discussion prior to walking in here because I'm, I'm hell-bent on, on doing this. Um, and I don't seem to be able to do it. And in all honesty, I don't think I'm going to be able to do it because I've been trying really hard for two years. Um, so that's been my, and is my experience. And uh, it's, uh, it, it comes with the disease. Mm -hmm. and, uh, and it's hard for me to uh, sometimes accept it. Thanks, thanks. I'm, just, I'm gonna focus on, on Wendy uh, sure. for a second. Wendy, you lived for a period of time without a pancreas and uh, lived with exocrine pancreatic insufficiency. Can you tell me what your, what your symptoms were? For me, um, again, um, with each pancreatitis episode, I would lose weight, but then I would gain it back. I would lose maybe, at the most, 10 pounds. In 2009, I ended up losing so much weight, I ended up dropping down to 100 pounds, which was over 50 pound weight loss. I ended up having a feeding tube. I was taking pancreatic enzymes at this point. I was eating low fat diet, um, trying to take as much calories I could with drinking Ensure. Um, but for me, it was hard. I, I just wasn't able to keep anything down. I wasn't, it was either I was throwing it up or I was having diarrhea. Um, and then after I had my pancreas removed, um, they put me on, I wasn't taking the enzymes well, I was taking the enzymes until I had my transplant, and then after my transplant, I wasn't having to take enzymes. I was gaining weight. Um, they did eventually put me on steroids, which, as you know, steroids will make you even put on more weight, <laughs> which I was hell-bent not to take when Dr. Gardner first suggested it um, back in 2009. I'm like, I didn't want to do it, but now that I am on the steroids, I have gained some of the weight back, not as not the 50 pounds, but I did put on at least 20 pounds um, since that 100, since I was down to 100 pounds. So. So what were the what were the symptoms that you had when when you had the malnutrition without the pancreas? I was fatigued. I was um, tired all the time. I just felt like I couldn't get out of my own way. Um, I was depressed for a while because I just couldn't figure out what was going on, um, just losing the weight. It was hard because I enjoy food <laughs> and not being able to eat was the hardest part for me because I, just, I was afraid to eat at one point. I was, I was just afraid to eat anything because I was afraid I was gonna throw it up. 
Wendy, did you notice that this period of time that you didn't have a pancreas, that you were getting bloated, that you were going to the bathroom a lot? When I didn't have my pancreas? Yeah. No. And that you... Okay. I wasn't. Um, I wasn't... I didn't feel like I was going to the bathroom a lot. I, I, I did have a lot of diarrhea, but that was normal for me. As I can say, it's normal because I was having the issues since the first day I was diagnosed. Um, so it wasn't, I, I didn't notice that I was going to the bathroom any more than I normally would. Um, and you were taking the pancreatic enzymes at that time? At that time, yes. I was still on the enzymes. Um, I was still having the pain. I was still having my pancreatitis pain, even though I didn't have a pancreas at that time. Um, in 2010 is when I had my pancreas removed. And when I talked to Dr. Gardner about it, I was like, dumbfounded because I couldn't understand why I was still having the pancreatitis pain when I didn't have a pancreas anymore. And that's when I learned about the phantom pain or the neuropathy pain that um, I was still experiencing. So I was still having the symptoms and I was getting more depressed and, and I couldn't understand why this was continuing to happen. So. Did the pain completely go away or do you still have episodes of pain? I still have episodes of pain to this day. Not as bad, not as frequent, but I still will occasionally have a muscle spasm or the, the pancreatitis pain that I, I've had in the past. And then after I lost my pancreas, I was also dealing with being a diabetic because mm -hmm. I was never a diabetic before that. So that was even difficult because the, you know, I wasn't able to regulate my blood sugars because I wasn't able to eat. I was, afraid, I was still afraid to eat. I was still afraid that I was gonna be sick and I was still having the periodic pain. And so it was really difficult for me.